would sound good and you sound good. They probably. sound good. I would imagine you sound good. It's I would fun. imagine you sound good. Because I love the sound of your voice. I'm glad this person is vacuuming at 11.30. We got a meth head above us. We got one of these British tweakers that they talk about on the streets. We saw that one guy hit something before getting on the train. <coughs> we were in the subway me. tunnel. The, the tube. The underground, bruv. The That's where I live. Tubi. Teletubies, they call it. We were below the crust with the troglodytes, weren't we? He was puffing on something that wasn't ganja, mate. He wasn't spinning a glass dick either. It was just a straight shot barrel load of crack cocaine. Must have been. I think he was the bo- the bloke from Oasis. He looked pale as a ghost. He looked like Pete Doherty. I'm going Liverpudlian. I'm going posh. <laughs> posh Spice. I'm Posh Spice. Hi, I'm Posh Posh Spice. Hello, it's me, Posh Spice, isn't it? I like to take a hit of the old paper and then vacuum the night away. I've been smoking crack in the tunnels because David won't answer me calls, will he? What, what was the quote? David Beckham. What was the quote of Posh Spice? She said something rather heinous. I think she said I owe it to the fashion community to look good all the time. Oh, yes. Something someone, like that. Someone asked, why do you always look like that? And she said, I look like this so that David Beckham's hands can look like this. And then it, she, he held up his hands and they were all burnt. <laughs> They were scarred, weren't they? From picking up a hot crack pipe. Picking up a crack pipe without any gloves, without any crack handling gloves. He burned his hand and he said, help us, help us. Now that's from The Simpsons, isn't it? That's oh, from The Simpsons giddy up. too, isn't it? A little bit of your butt gun powder came out your tunnel system. Oh, just a wee bit. I want to have me tubes tied, that's what I say. I say a lot of stuff. I say a lot when no one's listening. I talk to myself. I've been saying things today and have no one would respond to them. We had a rough morning, isn't it? Oh, you took a bit of criticism, didn't you? It wasn't criticism, it was just a slice of nasty pie. <laughs> it was a big heaping spoonful of piss and shit pie. <laughs> it, was, it was something other than, you're the best, mate, you changed me life. And you reacted like a wee little one. Who doesn't know how to take a little bit of a compliment well, and a criticism at well, once? Well, look here. If your wife ever watched you do standing up comedy, she's not a fan. And then she said something mean to you, it might rock your very <laughs> shocks as well, wouldn't it? I like to live in a world of ignorance where she doesn't know if I'm funny or not. Yes, you're Schrodinger's husband. <laughs> Aren't Schrodinger's you? comedian. You're Schrodinger's cunt today, aren't you, mate? Nobody sees the special, then they don't know if it's good or bad, do they? I don't know, Ringo. <laughs> it's me. That's liver puddling. You're liver puddling. I'm, I'm sitting in a liver puddle. <laughs> Me liver's been weeping. <laughs> it is. is I've right? got cirrhosis. I've had to wring it out from all the Guinnesses I had in Dublin there. Oh. There's my wife. She's got no undies on. So many Guinness. So many Guinness down the hatch, open it up, put it in the pipe. So little time. This, as my belly looked like a used latrine because of all the Guinness inside of it. Oh, Think about that. A lot of dark mud. A lot of mud. I make my own mud, don't I? I'm the like a little spider monkey in a tree. The host of the Dublin Airbnb called the police, the Garda, <laughs> said we have a goiter that had popped in the bathroom. That's the only explanation. Emmy, do you want to come over here and tell us about that goiter we saw in the Dublin airport, eh? Why not? Emmy, will you at least come in here and do your great accent that you have? She's she's not on this podcast. She's doing the next one. Emmy is going to be on the next podcast. She's going to be doing her impression of the lead singer of Madness. Emmy, come over here. What did Madness sing? Emmy, don't don't put your face in front of there. They're gonna they're gonna screen capture it and then they're gonna use it. They're going to make a dartboard out of it, and they're going to hit it with their loads. Do you remember the name of my talent agency? Yes, I remember. Your talent agency is called Get Over Here. That's right. <laughs> right? Yes, Get that's Over right. Here. <laughs> my talent agency. I said, oh, I wonder if there's any talent in here. She no. broke her own phone. My wife's having a bit of a spaz attack. <laughs> I think she's got some spider mites in her bundus. 
I think it's because you unplugged the phone from charging. So I had to unplug it so I could plug in her computer, which we're also using. I think you could have left it in. I could have, and I regret not doing so. Emmy, you missed out on about 3% of charge on my behalf, and I'm sorry. It would have been more if she hadn't been proactive. Emmy, go out there and scrub your gambrinus. <laughs> Give your gambrinus a scrubbing. Why what is you? grambinus? I can't remember. It's a Gr- beer, isn't grambinus it? Grambinus is a Czech beer. It's a beer. Ooh, I'll have a beer, won't you? Yes, well, thank you, Captain. It's me. There's a different guy. It's a different accent. God forbid we talk like ourselves. We can't do that, can we? I'm not I don't stopping. Know. I'm not stopping until you do. I'm going to do the voice the whole time, but it's going to evolve and become different dudes. We're going to have a very low-viewed episode. I don't think so. They like when we do characters. As long as it's not that pal Corbin of yours. Now, Corbin had a good showing, did he not? <laughs> People have been begging for Corby to come back. They say, what's <laughs> happened to Corbin? Is he still a human <laughs> trash can in the park? Well, that's we, when we left Corbin, he was considering it. <laughs> he, I think that he was in a torrid relationship with one of the <laughs> lesser Macaulay Culkin brothers. That's right. They're all, that's their name. They're the Macaulay Culkin <laughs> brothers. They're like Alvin and the Chipmunks. There's Macaulay. Mm-hmm. There's Mario. Yep. Luigi. Yes. And Princess Gra- Peach Culkin. Grambinus. Grambinus Culkin. Grambinus Culkin. He got out of the limelight, did he not? I don't know that you would call Kieran Culkin the lesser McCulkin, or the lesser Culkin at this point. Uh, he's certainly not Macaulay. Macaulay who pissed off to live in Paris and take drugs and sing about pizza pies. Right. Meanwhile, Kieran was on Succession. No one watched that. It was popular. It was not in this country a good show because we didn't understand all your allusions to American business parlance. Oh, they do business over here, mate. Oh, I've been doing business over here. You've been in the toilet breaking business and business has been good. Business is exploding, much like all the toilets I've been decimating with me bum. Oh, you know what I enjoyed? What did you enjoy? Did you have a secret piece of cake? No, no. <laughs> is that what you enjoyed no and you cake. didn't tell us? No, no cake? You had, you had some very public tiramisu and you didn't offer me any. I got it for myself, did I not? I told you we're having snacks while we watch our movie. Would you enjoy to have a snack? And you said, I don't need anything. Leave me be. I had currently, I had been full. I was full of fish. You had an entire red snapper, if I remember. I had uh, several people's fish dinners. Yes, you did. You also finished several people's French fries, and you finished a man's gyro in Dublin, which was a bit insane, but I recommend it to all. It wasn't insane. You finish people's food all the time. I do not. That's a Lund move. Lund says, Oi, boy, are you going to finish that apple? And he says, But I haven't even bit into it, mister. And you say, You're weaker than me. Give me my mouth. (laughs) Give me my mouth food. This is what I'd like to say. Hit me. I had a bit of a uh, toilet issue in Dublin. I sprayed... And I left a little bit of poop in the bowl. This is what you must say? Yes, because you went in there and you said, Oh my God, why don't you use a brush? And I said, That's the way you've left every toilet I've ever encountered after you. Yes, yes, yes. That's all hearsay. Oh, yes, of course. Why would I talk about it? No, no, no. It's not what I do. It's what happened. Every toilet looks better once I finish using it. Oh, no. Every toilet retires. Every toilet (laughs) is taken out to pasture and shot in the head with a scatter gun. Every toilet has been turned into a garbage can (laughs) after you're done. Most toilets are garbage cans if you think about it, baby. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. I've been hiding in here the whole time. It's me, Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, my God. It's me, Austin Possum. I'm a little marsupial. I can't believe you're coming back. I've been playing dead. I don't know if you heard, but I'm not Austin Powers. I'm Austin Possum. It's a whole different thing, baby. Oh, it's a new one. It's a new thing. It's an animated uh, movie for the younger set in which Austin Powers is reincarnated in the body of a possum, baby. I don't know if I'll go see that. I don't think anyone will. It's very bad. Trust me. We're in rewrites while we're filming. That's how you know it's going to be a real shit heap. <laughs> it's going to look like the backside of that toilet in Dublin, baby. And now, baby. It, oh, no. Oh, it's... I've... I've been... Austin Powers has been possessed by Sammy Davis Jr., baby. 
I don't know if you should explore. Sammy Davis, you haven't tried him out too long. Sammy Davis is easy, baby. You just look like this and you have your mouth a little bit full of spit, baby. And then instead of saying it like baby, you say baby. What like you're honking a horn. Oh, I'm back. What about Lebanese Sammy Davis Jr.? <laughs> You were exploring that earlier <laughs> today. About that. Oh yes, <laughs> that was getting me when the edible kicked in. Oh, a little bit of a gummy. <laughs> Walla Habibi, baby. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. That's Arabic, Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, you're talking as yourself. <laughs> Looks like I won, even though I only relied on one voice while you took a little tour of that the world. That was the narrator commenting on the show that they're watching. It Deus was not S. Not baby. The ghost in the machine. <laughs> Imagine a machine powered by ghosts. We would have to kill people every waking moment to keep it from turning off, baby. Imagine a baby ghost machine. (laughs) Instead of bowing, it would be called booing. (laughs) Wah, wah, baby. I'm a British baby. (laughs) Don't brush my tooth. I don't brush me tooth, do I? (laughs) I like my tea with milk. From mummy's bosom. (laughs) Squirt, squirt. I ride in a little carriage on the train, and every now and then I put my hand in a man's pocket, and me mummy slaps me hand and says, no, no, those aren't your keys. That really happened. You don't even have a car, baby, baby. He wanted to shake his own keys. A little boy put his hand in me pocket on the tube, and his mummy said, oh, oh, I'm going to have to torture you when we get home. I hope she didn't. I hope she did, because he's a little thief, is he not? He's a little fucking gadabout, handsy man. Uh, he, he looked like a nice chap to me. A he was. Baby. You cannot judge a child. His brain's probably simmering with poison. He grew up on the subway, and his favorite movie is Austin Possum. <laughs> he says, Mommy, can we go home and watch Austin Possum? I like it when the little rat sexually harasses all the other animals. It's already out then. Oh, it's uh, straight to VHS. <laughs> That's not good. Not even DVD. <laughs> it's a collector's item out the gate. That's not good for <laughs> sales. Oh, I don't care. I have so much money, baby. <laughs> I'm Hamas. <laughs> I'm Hamas. <laughs> Keep <laughs> talking, please. Don't stop it. I'm in Hamas. You'll sink us all lower than a yellow submarine. <laughs> please let the nightmare end. Stop talking. I'm going to. I'm still doing the accent, but now it's getting even further and further away from human speech, baby. I ended up doing a decent Donald Trump, didn't I? You really smashed it, darling. And then I lost it in the late show. (laughs) You couldn't get it back. It was like a dove released from a cage. You trailed off. Yes, you tried to do a joke about Donald Trump going to prison and raping everybody. (laughs) I'm the best at raping. Everybody knows I'm very good. It's not, I don't have it. It's okay, because you've been doing the liver puddling for too long. Oh, tried to do a little quick transition, and I failed. What about Donald Trump, who's also Austin Powers? I'm the best. <laughs> Everyone's saying I'm the best. <laughs> Everyone's saying I'm number one. I'm going to make America jizz again. <laughs> Everyone in America needs to jizz, baby. Randy Donald Trump. Oh, call me Randy, because I'm... Uh, my name is Randall, but call me Randy. <laughs> it's short for my full name. <laughs> I'm under a blankie, am I not? Look at that. <laughs> yes, you are. Look how square me head is right now. People love to see a big white mouse. That's why they like my stand-up when I perform in my transparent top. I'm going to start wearing... Saran wrap as a shirt when I go on stage. Oh, no, and then I'll say, will never be lower. I'll say, Peel me, peel me, baby. Peel me, Seymour. Go ahead and peel off that saran wrap, and we'll turn around and give that big booty a clap. I've been pointing out who's from England. You've been pointing out who's got them in a oh, major way. Oh, well. We've been saying Big Ben because that means she's got them. Clock it. Oh, yeah, clock. Clock these. Clock these. <laughs> clock these Manchester mounds, baby. Look at, look at these meaty Manchester meat mountains. And I'd like to ascend them. I'd like to climb them and plant a flag. But the flag is actually made of my cock. 
you think, think about anybody's it? Anybody's listening anymore? Everybody can't turn it off, baby. Nobody's made it to the 16-minute mark. I think they love it. Look, they like when we're having fun, and that's all we're doing now. We're not going to go through and tell you what exactly we ate here in London or who bombed. No, no one's going to know. Nobody bombed. I think that what they should say when they're planning a terrorist attack on the subway, they should say, watch out tomorrow because you're about to have your tubes tied. (laughs) I've been trying to figure out how to phrase that joke since I said tube tying about eight moments ago. (laughs) You judge 11 in moments. In London, we don't have minutes or hours or days. We've got moments, and it's our job to savor and suckle the marrow out of the sweet ones we get every day. Solid advice. It's hot in here, is it not? Last night, the thermostat was set to 94 degrees. I don't think that was correct. Yes, it was a liver poodle. A puddle of liver in my Mm. bed. Now, here's something I've wanted to ask you. What do you think is the main difference between Dublin and Foggy Lublin? What was that last time? London? (laughs) Well, I was... Here's what we've been saying. Dublin and London. Which one's better? I like Dublin because it's a lot tougher to put together. It's not right there in front of you like a big blinking light that says, this is a joke. This is a joke for you. No, you have to do the work on Dublin. A bit subtle. A bit subtle. I bought some cheese at the store and I ate just a wedge of it while I was waiting for you to come out. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. A bit of secret manchego in front of the store there, baby. Uh, apparently, you'll share your manchego, but you won't share your tiramisu. Now, when we were in the store, I said, Lan, you're going to want a treat because we're about to watch the best movie ever, The Adam Project. That we did. We watched it. It stars Ryan Reynolds' rap, which is what I'm going to call my Reynolds' rap that I wear on my body, this translucent layer. And then a little boy, he was a bit of a fire plug. I want to see what he does next. I it's think a bit he'll, of a star in him, doesn't he? I think he'll probably kill himself. <laughs> God, I hope not. That's what happens with these child stars. I'm sure he got diddled by Reynolds on set on just repeatedly. No. Oh, yes. Reynolds can't keep his finger out of every pot, can he? Run. That's why they call him Winnie the Pooh. Because <laughs> he's always got that sticky jam on his hand. He's allergic to pants. Winnie the Pooh. A. A. Milne. From right here in the British UK. That's right. Possibly from Liverpool. I think he was from Nottingham Forest. <laughs> You're thinking of Robin Hood? Oh, I always am thinking of Robin Hood, baby. Oh, you're horny again. I've never not been horny, to tell you the truth. <laughs> now, something I wanted to ask you. What was the main big difference for you between Dublin and London town? Uh, Dublin, there's less people, so it's a bit less annoying to get around. Ah, it's a, just a bit of a thumbprint compared to the palm slap that is London town. And it's a bit too much for me, especially now that I'm in Trinidad. I'm used to l- less people to bump into. Well, yesterday when we were on the train straight from the airport, we were jammed in there. We were jammed in there like a, 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 a scoop of Skull brand chewing tobacco in a gentleman's lower lip. Jammed, packed. Oh, sardines in a tin, mate. You, you hated it. You were like, my God, what have we done? I'm going to blow this whole train to smithereens. Call me... Om <laughs> Shadrikyo. Call me Guy Fox. Because I'm blowing up Parliament. Call me Guy Star Fox. Call me Guy Ritchie, because I've directed several good films and a couple of bad ones. Which ones were bad? You should direct Guy Star Fox. Remember Star Fox? Yes. Yes, that was a good game. Now imagine if Star Fox was wearing a mask and angry at Parliament. And instead of shooting those rings with his spaceship, he blasted Parliament down to the very pillars a bit more political. I like my N64 space shooters with a bit of political charge, baby. You can play Star Fox. I'll be playing F-Zero. F-Zero sucked. No, it didn't. It was for it was for knaves and simpletons. You were too young to get it. I couldn't handle the remote control. You put the controller in your mouth. I said, this gum tastes bad. 
It's it's plasticine gum. I can't even chew it. And it was yes, it was just an SNES controller. Speaking of SNES, we saw a bit of a blast from the past, didn't we? Uh, down by the London Eye, came across prints of various pop culture, and all of a sudden, several prints for the SNES game. Super ghouls and ghosts. Of all the things that my brain could never create, it would be stumbling upon a street fair where they were selling books and records and CDs and prints from movies and all types of pop cultural ephemera and stumbling upon a 16 quid 8 by 11 advert for super ghouls and ghosts. My brain could never cook that up in a million fevered dreamings. It was the only video game that we came across. Yes. Well, it really Why? Took a, well, because if you ask me, British Parliament's full of only ghouls and ghosts. Do you remember when I bombed the other day in Dublin? I do. We were in a taxi shed, which is what they called cabs in Dublin. We were in a shed, <laughs> yes. In a taxi mobile, ripping through Dublin town. And our driver pointed it, and he said, that's Parliament over there. And I said, more like the nut house. But unfortunately, the man was old, and so he probably had respect and reverence for the people in control. He revered his politicians, as a good Irishman does, but not us in the UK. We're able to uh, discern a bit better who's a trickster and who's a thief, but not over there in Irish. I call it Irish. <laughs> <laughs> over there in Irish, they, they don't know. They're just, oh, Lauren Begore, if it ain't the little leprechaun... That kind of talk. Charlie Begarlin. Charlie. My Irish eyes do cry when someone calls my leaders insane to the naked eye. That was very good. Oh, thank you. That was very good for a Liverpudlian to do such a convincing Dublin accent. Oh. That might have been from the County Cork, honestly. I couldn't tell ye. Oh, now I'm all over the place. It's okay. Now you've become some kind of pilgrim. How did they talk? Hello, pilgrim. <laughs> it's me, a pilgrim. It's 1620, it's, and I want some corn. I just came over here wearing a wool suit, and I reek like flea bites. <laughs> My flea bites have shit in them. My <laughs> let's have some dinner. God, so yeah, we. I think you did Corbin for about... 20. No, you did Corbin for like 36 minutes and people threatened to kill your wife. They, that's what they do. <laughs> people come out. They're so unoriginal with their threats. Don't hurt did, my wife. What did Corbin even sound like? I don't want to bring him back. I'll lose this one if I try that one. Is his face over here? Oh, that's right. He kind of sounded like Little Nicky. <laughs> no, he didn't. He kind of sounded like Little Nicky. <laughs> 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 if, if, if I know anything about our listeners, they're going to hate this fucking episode. Because we brought back Super Ghouls and Ghosts and Little Nicky. What the fuck? <laughs> our listeners are more of a murder mystery two crowd. Now I've even lost Little Nicky. Because I obviously haven't rewatched it since it came out. Why would I? Unless I was truly insane. <laughs> now it's just a creation of my own. And I don't know who he is, but I think I'm going to let him take control for a while. I don't have a phone, so I should probably lose my mind, too. You lose your phone and then you start talking like little Nicky. All I do is play super ghouls and ghosts and talk to myself as a little Nicky ass character <laughs> named Big Cletus. <laughs> Big Cletus doesn't have a southern accent like a lot of people named Cletus. It's an honor to have you on the pod, Big Cletus. <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> All I do is plan my revenge. And play super ghouls and ghosts, right? <laughs> well, yes, I multitask. <laughs> as soon as I beat super ghouls and ghosts, I'll be ready to execute my plot. <laughs> I'm blowing up parliament in every country, whether they have one or not. Parliament's blown up already, man. What George Clinton did for them, <laughs> he really put them on. <laughs> Get up. On the downs road, 
Oh, everybody get up. Get up. Here's something. On the downs drunk. Here's something you don't know. I watched Little Nicky pretty recently. <laughs> <laughs> you must be as insane as me. I'm even crazier because I watched it with the sound off. Because I didn't want. I then, as he was talking, I would do all of his lines in a voice that kind of sounded like him. <laughs> so I would just riff along while it was on on mute. That sounds great to me, baby. <laughs> I think that sounds smashing. Oh, this guy's back. I like him. We don't have you in hell. There's no British people in hell. Sounds good to me, baby. That's right, because you guys are all Protestant. Yes, we get to go to heaven, huh? Yeah, you're all up there. Oh, I'm just right. covered in Irish Catholics down here. <laughs> no one's good at basketball. Everyone's always sunburned. So you heard me doing that voice and you said, I should probably do that voice too. I should get in there. <laughs> this is the new hotness. This is the new shit. Well, I did watch Little Nicky pretty recently with Emmy. Why? We <laughs> she hasn't seen Gangs of New York, and yet you watched Little Nicky together <laughs> instead. She, we had a Sandler triple header. Okay, what were the other two? We watched uh, Happy Gilmore, Little Nicky, and Mr. Deeds. Okay. Mr. Deeds was great. Yeah, I remember liking it. Tuturo's in it. Yeah, he's funny. I'm a sneaky little man. Yeah, he's always sneaking I'm, around. I'm very sneaky. Yes. Um, you know, he there's. Says it. I can't believe Mr. Deeds. <laughs> Tuturo's character says it. He does. And people just kind of look the other way because they didn't want to cancel Tuturo. Well, he when he opens the door and they have that special cameo from the ladies' man, he's just so surprised. <laughs> he's like, "What the hell are you doing here?" Beep. <laughs> you must have watched the director's cut. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, so you watched... So out of the three... Gilmore. Well, I'm just uh, just trying to think. Like Out of the three, Happy Gilmore, Good Call, Mr. Deeds, sure. Well, you forget about Mr. Deeds. Cause everyone's like, let's watch Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. Everyone, first pick, it's Big Daddy. So yeah, we threw on Deeds, and then we were like, if we're going to do this, let's do it all the way. It's little Mickey time. <laughs> We cranked Nikki for 93 minutes. <laughs> and it's not good, right? No, Kevin Nealon has the boobs on his head. That's, That's kind of cool. cool. But other than that, that fucking movie, not that good. I don't like when Adam Sandler knows mystical powers. That's your That's my up. That's my big issue. Mm. That's why I like... Uh, uh, I like uh, Guest of the Wedding. Is that the name of it? Muriel's Wedding? Sandler's in that? Yeah, it's him and Chris Rock, and it's like their kids are getting married, and Chris Rock is rich, and Sandler's like, but we got to, everyone's got to pitch in on and spend the same amount of money on the dinner. And Chris, uh, Locks, Chris Rock's like, man, I don't need to do that. I got all the money. Just keep me away from my crazy parents. I don't think that's Muriel's wedding. But. Yeah, and then Adam Sandler's like, well, what if instead of me it was little <laughs> Nicky? Like in the movie, he's just re. <laughs> what if I was little Nicky in this movie too? Wait, did you watch Hubie Halloween? Oh yeah, of course. Me and Emmy watch it every Easter. What does he sound like? Does he do kind of a little Nicky? Voice? He kind of does like a shabba do again. <laughs> oh, okay. A shabba gabba guapa. Good call. <laughs> he just does little Nicky, but it's Hubie Halloween. I'm Adam Sandler, and we've got a free Palestine. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of everyone thinks of me as Jewish comedian but really I'm a humanitarian voice that's right this is how I actually talk he's, he's from New York I'm from New York I'm actually from Concord New Hampshire <laughs> but I don't let that get out do I yeah, you don't let it get out too bad is that uh, the I capital don't. Concord Concord's the big boy I think it's Concord then you got Burlington Vermont Manchester's in the mix, but they don't really get enough love. Manchester, England? Manchester by the sea, little Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different Sandler guy talking to little Nicky. <laughs> but it's right on the fringe of Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the outskirts of Nick Apocalypse. <laughs> Is that in Greece? Yeah, it's in Crete. <laughs> That's its own 
place. There was a guy at the show in Bratislava. He was from Turkey, and he kept using the toilet that was right next to the stage. He kept using it? He went in there twice, and he was in there for longer and longer intervals. <laughs> and I said, well, Turkey, more like turdy. What are you doing in there? You got, a, you got a Turkish delight for me? What are you baking up on that toilet bowl? I biked the door. I just held the mic to the door. It's like, we can hear you. <laughs> Did they like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I had to do everything I could. It was in a bookstore because... Uh, all the shows in Europe sold well, except for Bratislava. It sold like 15 tickets. So they moved it from this theater that was called the Hotel Colorado to uh, this bookstore called Next Apache. And in one room, there was a bunch of books and like a little reading area. And then there was like a bar with like a couple of kegs and a coffee machine and big board game tables. And the host, he did, a, he did God's work, but he failed to get the people that were playing board games to come in. Mm. So by the time I got up there, there was like seven people in this room. And I was able to finally get the board game people to come in. But uh, yeah, there were, at, at the most, there was like maybe 18 people at that show mm. in two separate rooms. In one room, you could smoke cigarettes. So everyone wanted to be in that room because it was Eastern Europe. That was the game they were playing was smoke the cigarette. How many cigs can you smoke <laughs> while ignoring the fat man? <laughs> yes. And there was a there was a guy from Turkey and there was a guy from Greece right next to each other. And I said, grease up the turkey. And that went really well. <laughs> and I kind of just like skated from there. <laughs> <laughs> Dined out. Yeah. <laughs> Dined out on that for a while. Uh-huh, yeah. I made a big old meal of that greasy turkey slob. <laughs> And the turkey guy went to the bathroom and I just like stood in front of the door. He was like, we can hear you. It stinks. <laughs> I did my full stand there. Ew, it stinks in there. <laughs> what are you cooking in there? What do you got, a full turkey you just dropped in the bowl? <laughs> this is my impression of a guy doing an impression of Adam Sandler, but he's never heard Adam Sandler talk. <laughs> so it's pretty close. <laughs> he's trying to cover his bases, so he throws a lot of different voices and accents. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Squab a screw. He doesn't know about Shabadoo. He knows he's been in a lot of stuff, so he's like, oh, but he sounds like a lot of different people. He's probably... He's like Gary Oldman. He can become anyone at any time. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Is, is, uh, is there anywhere... That I can't go? That you went on this tour mm -hmm. that you definitely wouldn't go back to? Well, I don't know if I'm in a hurry to get back to Stockholm. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we saw Stockholm from top to bottom because we got there with like, you know, first four days of vacation enthusiasm, which meant we're riding the big red bus, we're taking the, the river cruise, we're, uh, we're returning to places that we found on the big red bus to further explore. So I feel like I really like kind of scraped the meat off of all those bones. Mm. I'll be scraping meat. <laughs> Easy, Nikki, we're talking. <laughs> Sorry, he just kind of comes out of me from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> you should come out of the closet, you fat gay. Oh, what the hell, Mickey? <laughs> I'm homophobic, obviously. Because I'm from hell. hell. I'm the devil's son. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. Who's my mommy? Do they establish that? Yeah, I think it's Rita Rudna. <laughs> Rita Rudna's my mommy. <laughs> it's not though, right? I think it is. <laughs> they don't show her, do they? No. I wonder if, why. It would have been Tia Carrera if I could have cast it correctly. <laughs> but we had a limited budget. They we couldn't get Carrera. It was right after 9-11. We had Kevin Nealon money. <laughs> That's all we could scrape off. They had to pick between Kevin Nealon and Tia Carrera. They went with Nealon. Yeah, we thought we bet on the sex appeal of Kevin Nealon. Tia Carrera's boobs are the ones on his head. We so slapped like him an, off. An homage, you know. Yeah. It's like a cameo. Mm hmm That's just a quick little day day rate. Day, One day rate. Shoot. Yeah, but they can only afford her boobs for a day. We um <laughs> we yeah, I don't think I would be going back to Stockholm. I mean I want to see more of Bratislava. Bratislava was cute, man. We got there and we stumbled into this like big market and there was like a big book flea market upstairs and then there was a bunch of natural wine stalls downstairs and Emmy bought all this cool stuff to like have a little picnic and then later that night we were walking around and we followed this like weird balkan music until we wound up at another like wine festival i think it was the uh, beaujolais nouveau of slovakia and it was just it was just a really magical time we went to the we went to the uh, opera 
That's right. Yeah, it was it was crazy because it was uh, it was an operatic rendition of Little Nicky, <laughs> so that was cool. There was just a lady up there going, "I'm the devil's son." <laughs> it's really cool. And Kevin Nealon was there too. They say it's better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. But what if you're serving your father in hell? What do you do, Shabadoo? I don't even think he hit a Shabadoo in that movie. (laughs) That's why a lot of people didn't like it. Robert Robert Ebert said it needed more Shabadoos. (laughs) One thumb down. Roger Ebert had his jaw removed so that he... (laughs) Would never have to be forced to smile when lying about enjoying little Nicky. <laughs> That's one of like the uh, big underlying motifs of this podcast is your obsession with Robert Ebert getting his jaw removed. Roger Ebert. Roger Put Stone. Some respect on his name. I don't. I don't know, dude. Roger Ebo. Roger Ebert. Which I, I used obsessed. to watch his show. I am obsessed. I'm terrified. Uh, that that will happen to me. And uh, in order to kind of maybe shout at the devil, I bought two vapes today. (laughs) (laughs) I'm playing with my own fate. (laughs) I'm saying, come at me, little Nicky. Take my jaw, please. I'm Henny Youngman. (laughs) Except with mandibles. (laughs) I'm married to my own jaw. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what guy you 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 made yourself laugh twice really hard today oh yeah yeah the first one oh, not the first one. one over here on the couch what was that Shoof. i can't remember i don't know i mean you got yourself at dinner when you said uh the thing about your talent agency we were surrounded by japanese oh, people yeah. at this fish and chip shop and you said uh emily was like have you noticed anything about this place and you were like you mean the surroundings or the talent and she said, the talent. And then you said, well, yeah, I have a talent agency. I'm a talent scout. And my talent agency is called. Get over here. Yeah. So that got you really hard. And then yeah, you went did. to use the bathroom. And the lady said, let me show you how. And you said, I know how to do it. <laughs> because she had to unlock the door. But you made us all laugh really hard with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad she liked it instead of being like, ugh. Oh, yeah. She she liked it. And then I also liked hearing she, you laugh in the bathroom. She just sprays me with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your face falls in the fish fryer. Rubs me in the knee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me and Emmy eat our dinner. <laughs> You're like, ow, I'm right ow. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> no one pays attention to me unless I do little Nicky voice. But I think I tore my patella tendon. Oh, my God. I'm having so much fucking pain over here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, wrap it up. <laughs> oh, God. How's, how over it is she? <laughs> she's not. Dude, she's been so good. I love her so much. She got me this morning because she uh, was mean to me. Or maybe I was being, I think I was being touchy. But, uh, yeah, I love her so much. I can't stay mad at her. I see her, and I'm just like, oh, my God, look how cute she is. Look at her little hair or her hat. Well, and I I mean, I backed it up. What she was saying was that last night at Leicester Square Theater, you were very huge. raunchy. Thank you to all the chubby chasers who came out. That was cool, man. Couple that felt of, really cool. A couple of Lund guys. And Joe, we walked in. Patch and Patch. Joe hit you with I'm a Lund guy right away. Uh, little so that stinky. put me in an immediate bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good show, but uh, yeah. yeah, you were raunchy. The riffs, I think, were a little... One, you did an hour instead of like 45 to 50, so there was a little more it's Also a wandering. theater, you know? You have to do the jokes. You have to riff. You can't just do crowd work like I do. Mm-hmm. I'm the only man to ever do crowd work. No, that's the thing is I'm over crowd work, so in that big of a room, you're like, okay, I'm just going to talk to you. I'm going I'm to do my jokes, and yeah, and sometimes when you are playing at the extremes of the human mind <laughs> that's what you do that's what i do You're yeah like albert einstein well i could only fill 50 minutes with my great little nicky impression <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it was way too much little nicky well and also when you introduced me you said what was your introduction for me after the break we're in the lester theater it's a beautiful room historic oh yeah what's the history oh it's been there forever it's like it's like the first time an american comic comes over to london that's usually the room they do Oh yeah, so well, it's like it's like a big deal. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you brought me on by uh, saying 
Hey, did you enjoy the break? Have you all pissed and shit? Now that now that you all pissed and shit. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice place. Yeah. I kind of regretted it immediately, but it was funny and people liked it. Yeah. And they said, we have pissed and we have shit. Yes. Oh, pissed and all shit. Now I'm ready for more laughing, huh? Oi, mate. I've pissed and shat. Now bring out the big man, eh? Let us have him. The parched sounding guy, but he's still... Can't escape his cockney past. Look here. I pissed in a shit, baby. <laughs> baby, I've pissed and shat 14 times today. I ate something bad. I had some underkick. I had some undercooked chili roll. <laughs> What's that? It's a, it's a London some. treat. Give me some. But yeah, also, so yeah, I was a bit raunchy and extreme. It's okay. That's and you. he said I was raunchy. I was like, raunchy you, extremist. Yes, yeah, like. <laughs> raunchy extremist well like i said i would actually like to make a list two two columns a word map a word cloud well yeah well no just the list just to see them next to each other but the like intelligent vocabulary that you used which was extensive you know and then the other side is just all of the the bad word swear words and like gross descriptions of the human body or what it does yeah and it would be funny there would be just a lot you could draw a lot of conclusions if you looked at those two columns i don't know if you could i think you would be like what is this madman spouting about <laughs> what is this strange fucking freestyle poetry this guy's all about <laughs> is he dealing with the extremes of the human condition yeah i guess you're covering a lot of ground because if somebody liked the whole show, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with that person. <laughs> There's no, I enjoyed the whole show. It, yeah. I know. I'm you just did saying. great. You had that great thing about a seatbelt extender. Yeah, I needed a seatbelt extender for the first time because we're on Ryanair, which is maybe worse than Frontier. I think it's right around like the frontier of, of Europe. It's it's they sell scratch good. tickets on the airplane <laughs> that's how you know you're dealing with some pretty low class individuals yeah There's some they, kind of gypsy scheme they're running up they there. sell your email address <laughs> yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah they um i sat down and it was the first time like there have been times recently because i'm the biggest i've been and there, were, there have been times where i have been like oh god it's this is gonna be tough really yeah huh. and then i get it and not not that I'm like sitting there in pain the whole time, but where it's like I I don't have to I can't really like pull to tighten. It's right. just like as big it's as, as it can tight be. As it can be, and yeah. it's no no where it's as, as as long as it can go, and then I leave it there, and and I'm and I'm comfortable. And then this time it, I like couldn't I couldn't get it. I was close, but yeah, I needed the extender. And the guy in front of me was bigger than me. I looked at his giant bald head as he sat in front of me, and he also got a seatbelt extender. And then, and I was like, all right, solidarity. <laughs> and then I figured you needed one too. No, I never need them. Well, because you didn't buckle it. No, but I mean, I've never needed one ever in my life. But I'm saying you said you didn't buckle your Well, I don't like being told what to do. Right, but also you couldn't. So I didn't even try. I sat on <laughs> mine and I didn't move towards it once. <laughs> so you were more uncomfortable than if you put it on. Well, maybe the lady came up and she was like, uh, Mrs. Talent, looks like yours is on. Uh, and oh, little Nikki, yeah, you're surely <laughs> you're bound in. And I went, yeah, I'm tight over here. I'm locked in. I'm not going anywhere except for back to hell to get my daddy. Yeah, but yeah. So the flight attendant, uh, a few minutes later, came and talked to the dude, and he she, he was in an emergency exit row. Uh, if I haven't already said that, and she said, I'm sorry, but. You can't be in the emergency exit row and ha use a seatbelt extender, which is ridiculous. Well, yeah, because if there's a tear in the plane, he'll just plug it with his fat body. <laughs> He's like man putty. He can help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am man putty. Yeah, I'm man putty. <laughs> but uh, Elaine, I'm putty. <laughs> put me, put me in the shower to plug up that leak. Elaine, rub me all over a newspaper. <laughs> Pick up the comic strips. Show them to your dad. Let's Have get him give silly. you a nickel. Uh, but yeah, you can't be in the emergency exit row and use a seatbelt extender. Too and fat he, to save. He said, that's fine. I don't need it. And he gave it back. And I was like, wait, what? This what? guy's huge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he did. 
because she must have looked like maybe yeah you got away with it because you weren't in the emergency exit because you like stared down the the flight attendant as she no i just approached and I just, she just kept walking I and hit was her scared. With my little nikki and she was fine she loved it yeah oh speaking of flight attendants too fat for heroics i go to the back you know we can we can go in the front or the back of the plane you and emmy go in the front i go into the back i walk up and into the plane and the flight attendant, instead of greeting us, saying, hello, how are you? Uh, welcome to Ryanair. She's staring off into the distance, <laughs> kind of like slumped uh, on, uh, with like her head in her arm on like a little shelf. And she's just kind of biting her arm just a, <laughs> just a little bit. Just like, <laughs> it's gumming her forearm? <laughs> yeah, like she's not... She's not arr, she's not going at it. Yeah. Like there's a little brown sauce on there. And she's a she's a giant battered fish. She is just like it, like like the like something that you would do when you don't think anybody's looking. Yeah. Except she knows pe- every single person is looking yeah. at her because they're walking into a plane and she's the first person that is seen. And it's her job to make people feel, feel like safe or like they made yeah. the right choice booking Ryanair. If there's trouble, yeah. don't worry. We have a great we have a great team. We have a great yeah. flight crew. No. Except for <laughs> big Cletus over there. Just, <laughs> <laughs> if I nibble my arm, then it won't. Then the plane won't crash. <laughs> it was wild, and I don't think I ever. I don't know if I saw her again because there was the guy. Oh yeah, what did the guy do? He like yelled at one of the flight attendants. Oh yeah, they had a verbal altercation in the front of the plane, right in front of us. <laughs> what a shit show! Yeah, it was crazy. She was, he was like, he was like, shut up, do your job. <laughs> And she came back up to talk to him again, and he said, do your job. And then he got on the horn and said, hello, thank you for joining us on Ryan Airlines. We're going to be flying you all the way to London Stansted, the third worst airport in London. It's going <laughs> to deliver you an hour and a half train ride away from London, so you're going to have plenty of time to think about what a bad choice you made flying this airline. Yeah. If you look to the back of the plane, we have arm-nibbling Julie. She's completely lost it on account of the chocolate. Uh, and I'm up front, and I'm verbally abusive to any woman who crosses me. So, ladies, if you got any tips or tricks, keep them to yourself, because my fingers are itching to start slapping. We and they had, it was a 55-minute flight, but they g- sold, s- like, a bunch of different food, duty-free cigarettes. Fireworks. Drink. <laughs> The scratch, the scratch, uh, <laughs> literally tickets scratch tickets were for charity. Real. They yeah. said it was for charity. That's I don't think lie. it is. No, and it's uh, to get the Joyces some more chickens to eat for their feasts. Oh hell yeah, dude! Shout out to Connor and Megan, uh, who went to the early show at Wheelands uh, in Dublin. And then we, they caught me coming out of the bathroom, not right out of the bathroom. (laughs) They were waiting. (laughs) But I was going to. Hey, we have a talent agency. (laughs) Yeah, it's called Get in the Car. Get in here. I Um, kept saying they were swingers. (laughs) Yeah, you wish. I do. You wanted me to bang both of them. Yeah. And get banged down. Correct. Um, You did the math. No, they were nice, but they eventually, just because we were in Ireland, there were a few times where I brought up the movie Knuckle. And it usually paid off because somebody knew something. And uh, they were from like around near where some of them, some of the travelers uh, lived. I don't know if they set up shop for a long time. Obviously, they travel. Yeah, it was County Gambrinus. <laughs> Grambinus. But uh, yeah, it was uh, interesting because it's like countryside. And I said, Joe Joyce, like driving that horse around, you know, horse and buggy. And they're like, oh, yeah. Uh, they're millionaires yeah and that they have yeah they have a ton of dough shout out to knuckle you guys gotta watch knuckle it's the best documentary about uh inbred boxers that you'll ever see (laughs) i was gonna say they're not inbred but oh they for sure are well yeah 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 and that's fine and that's okay and if you call them inbred they'll punch you in the face they soak their hands in petrol yeah no i'm you you can't i'm uh, afraid of them you can't say a, a negative thing about them yeah. Also, we saw a literal Irish horse thief in the streets of Dublin on our way to walk to the Guinness factory where the pints were flowing and the jokes were nonstop. We uh, saw a man riding a horse without a saddle while wearing like duck boots. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had no control over the horse. It wasn't going anywhere he wanted it to. He, I don't think he had reins. I think he was just pulling its mane to make it go right or left. I think they were both drunk. <laughs> uh, off petrol 
yeah. they were drinking gasoline <laughs> and yeah and traffic was just like crawling behind the two of them as yeah, they, yeah the horse would like stop moving every few steps and then he would have to like try to convince it to keep going yeah it was wild and then we tell some of the comics that night and they're like oh yeah that'll happen yeah we got horse people or all one over. of them said that horse that's people the tra- are bound that's the travelers <laughs> yeah they'll just like have an unruly horse that's addicted to pills oh you know what got me really good was no. when we were watching the movie and uh you just decide to <laughs> throw out like uh for jennifer garner and mark ruffalo's characters are married and you we were joking that you know she was going to accuse him of like drinking again and you go what are you using and <laughs> it got me so hard emmy's been good. on fire too hold on emmy leave her alone emmy will you come in here no don't make her come in here she doesn't want to come do in some here. of her great bits she was blasting us all day i remember one you one do? was good what was it Instead of exits, it says way out. Emmy, will you do some of your best bits that you did today on us for the people of the pod? Come on, just hit him with one good bit. There was way out. No, yeah, no, he hasn't, he hasn't said that one yet. Here. <laughs> what? You can't do way out? Oh, yeah, In- Buffalo. Instead of exit for, in the subway, it says way out. And she said, way out. But to me, she said, way out. That'll be you when you come out of the closet. <laughs> yes. Way out. And then she and then <laughs> she walked elegant. under a street light and went, yes. Yeah, because she nailed it. She's been it on fire. Funny. Emmy, I love you so much. I miss you. Okay, thank you. Also, speaking of this, last night, who came out to the show but my childhood friends? Oh, yeah. Shout out. Sammy Loft. Sammy Campbell now. Ressa Vandegrift, Vincent <laughs> Via Vicencio. Vincent D'Onofrio. Which I I've been saying believe. Villa Vicencio our entire life, but last <laughs> night he said Via Vicencio and I felt bad about it. Oh, that's, yeah, I thought you were a quarter mestizo or whatever. I am, but he's 100%. Well, you'd think you'd know how to do the double L. I, I dude, I thought it was Villa Vicencio because I've been hearing like basketball coaches pronounce his last name forever. Oh, yeah. And the then also of Patsy of us all. Yeah, <laughs> The <no>. basketball coaches <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> Rural Colorado, <laughs> not good at the pronunciations. Dude, one time in our locker room, we were watching film, and uh, the lights were off. This was during football, and my coach, Coach Klein, walked up to the front and tripped over David Borey and say, David, Jesus, it's dark, smile. Oh, and we all God. laughed at him. Yeah, <laughs> like We were yeah. like, this is hilarious, but it was really bad. It was a really bad thing of my coach to say. And David Sorry still remembers you, it. Me. I wonder to do her bits. You know, yeah, that's not fair. Also, I've, she's going to do the next one, probably. I hope so. I've been trying to keep uh, Emmy happy, and a big part of that is uh, is keeping my face shaved. Mm-hmm. And also, I, I sometimes mix up my face and my dick. A new thing that I've been doing is when I can't unlock my phone with my face because I'm too squinty-eyed from being high or whatever, I pull down my pants and I hold it up to my penis. <laughs> and it unlocks that way because it thinks I'm a dickhead. <laughs> and a big issue has been that my pubes have been out of control. Do you have ugly pubes, Nathan? Uh, I mean, they're okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know walk past them without smiling if i saw them in a bar but i also wouldn't <laughs> take them home to megan and say what do you think about a three threesome <laughs> yeah like those swingers in that bar like connor and swingers. squeaky they were, they were old friends <laughs> he didn't she didn't like him uh when they were young because he was a little squint and then he squint. grew up and like you know became a man yeah and then she was like oh hello Kind of like Ryan Reynolds when he tries to bang his mom in the Adam Project. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's for 12 and up. And yet, yeah, there was almost incest. I was like, what is this, Back to the Future? Yeah. Um, Which they referenced. If you have ugly pubes, your life is in shambles, and your confidence has taken a hit, cheer up with Manscaped. <laughs> cheer up with using. <laughs> yeah. Cheer, cheer up, up with using With again. smoking crack in the subway <laughs> and doing a very bad version of a voice. <laughs> for about 30 minutes on your podcast that people love. Over committing and underperforming. I don't underperform. <laughs> I can't underperform. I'm the devil's son. <laughs> it's getting further away from you, Sam. I shaved my own pubes. I shaved my own pubes, Dad. <laughs> I wipe my own pubes. Well, you're doing it wrong. 
<laughs> You're doing it wrong. Manscaped, speaking of, they just launched their performance package 5.0. 5.0. That's four more than 1.0. It'll clean things up down there and make those balls smooth and shiny. It'll clear cut your pubes like a Brazilian rainforest. What? That's not oh, cause, good. Because they're, they're turning it into toilet paper and whatnot. It'll, 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 what's, I can't read this. My glasses aren't working. There we go. My glasses aren't working. My glasses are, his glasses aren't working. <laughs> well, maybe get him a cup then. <laughs> the package includes brand new lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Well, that's, Ultra is even better than just 5.0. It has two interchangeable blade heads. So when you want to get head, you, this copy is out of control. Do you want to get your pipe absolutely gobbled by your bitch-ass wife? What? This is <laughs> that crazy. That sounds like you. No. Did you write this? No, I don't. You can decide if you just want to trim or if you're going for that super close shave. Yeah, do you want to look a baby down there? <laughs> do you yeah. want to look, you like... look like you've never hit puberty? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to role play where your wife's a pedo? <laughs> I mean, it really is tough because uh, if you go real short but there's still stubble and she's grinding away. She's gonna be. She's gonna have gash rash. Yeah. Well, have you ever gone all the way down to the to the rocks to the shocks? No, no, <laughs> no. No. But I don't. Yeah, it's tough. You gotta. Yeah, you want to be pretty smooth, I guess. Damn. I, or uh, let them grow out and let them be. You know, bush. You know what we should do? Mm-hmm. I'll let you shave my pubes if I can shave yours. No. No. That'd be thank good you. Patreon content. Two thousand patrons will do that. Yeah, come on, guys, join up. <laughs> join that Patreon so you can see us use these manscaped devices. So you can see our dick, balls, and assholes. I'm going to spread, and I'm going to see if my phone will unlock if you hold it up to my hole. <laughs> How's that sound, manscaped? Put the money in the bag, and no one gets hold. <laughs> Uh, As always, it comes equipped with Manscaped Skin Safe technology. Skin Safe? That sounds bad. That's good. Well, it prevents snags, tug, nicks, so you can weed whack without fear. What? I'm reading the copy. Timestamp it. (laughs) (laughs) Nicks. New York Nicks. New York Nicks. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code chubby at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code C-H-U-B-B-Y at manscaped.com. Now back to the little Nicky impressions. How'd they know? (laughs) How'd they know we were going to do that? Did you send them the show notes beforehand? No. No? That's crazy. How did they know? They're really good. They're really good. What the fuck? Um, you know what else is really good? Being over here with you and my wife. Yeah, you know, it's been nice. I miss my wife. I wish she was here, damn it. And you can't call her because you lost your phone. I didn't Air throw quotes. it into the Liffy. Yeah. <laughs> is that the river? I think so. I think the it's Liffey. the river and dub. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, no, I fucking, it almost certainly fell out of my pocket uh, as I got out of our taxi cab. That's because we went to the Guinness Brewery and you broke edge. It didn't break edge. I had a couple of sips and then a pint and a half yeah. of full-bodied <laughs> Guinness draft beer. And he said, I'm back. I've never felt better. I'm going full little Nicky. We're going to get a load of me. Anyway, uh, no, it has been great. Uh, I'm very excited for Denver because that's like a homecoming Spider-Man kind of thing. Uh, no way home. Well, guess what? It is a homecoming. We're coming right through you, baby. Spider Man's full of shit. I cannot wait. If you're in Denver and you've not bought tickets to see me at Comedy Works with Nathan Lund featuring November twenty second, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth, what are you doing? Come out and see us. We'll be doing all of our favorite bits. We'll what be doing Guiguo versus Chamba. <laughs> I'll be doing about thirty five minutes of Little Nicky stuff. <laughs> Uh, Save it for the special. Yeah, I know. And also, I'm filming a special December 1st and 2nd in Cincinnati at Go Nanners. <laughs> I'm also going to be in Columbus. I'm going to be in Louisville. I'm going to be in Lexington. Me I'll, too. I'll be in Madison, Wisconsin. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Just add it. Chicago, the first weekend of January. Yeah, Eau Claire, baby. You didn't tell me. I don't tell you everything, do I, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Little Habibi. Hey, Walla Habibi, baby. It's me, little Nikki from Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! 
just, Whoopsie. You just burnt a hole in the couch oh, with your yeah, butt. For sure. <laughs> Sorry. Also, patreon.com slash Sherry Behemoth has all the great episodes you want. Five dollars a month. You know what? If you're on the Patreon and you're raising hell about anything, it's five dollars a month. You know what I mean? We do a really good job over there. Oh, yeah. We there's, deliver so much quality fucking shit over there. Well, we started the Patreon when we started the pod, so that means there's three years of Patreon episodes. Oh, yeah. There's so all ready to go. If you've listened to all of the free ones and you love them, then, hey, and you want more, you don't have to wait around, you know, for the new one each week, the new you don't free have, one. You don't have to wait by your radio dial. Go back into tw- the past to 2020. Patreon.com slash chubby behemoth, baby. Get in there. Yeah, there's some really good stuff. I'm in, hell, in hell, there's no Patreon. I'm proud of some of those, most of those episodes. <laughs> I mean, some of the best ones are in there, which I say a lot, but yeah. I mean it. I, I know that I know that to be true. And uh, yeah, it was really funny to listen to listen to your friends from Elizabeth gush over how much they love the pod and they listen to every episode. And I was like, how funny that he just uses first and last names, f- you know, for all kinds of people, friend and foe. And they're like, oh, yeah, they like they like listen scared <laughs> because <laughs> they don't know if they're next, if you're going to blast them for something they did when they were 15. Oh, man, I've known those girls since I was like, I think, fifth grade. I mean. Well, I, yeah. I loved them so much. They were so such an important part of uh, of keeping me from becoming pure evil. When you, you right, they well, kept me in check. Yeah, it sucks when um, when when men don't have wom- women friends, or if you're not used to like talking to girls just as friends. You don't. They're not just holes to be filled. Jesus, they're not. <laughs> God. And so, if you have woman women friends, if you have sisters that you like, it helps you become a better young adult instead of a psychopath who's just trying to get blown. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely wasn't that guy. Yeah, <laughs> you did look like one. We saw a picture of you from prom. You looked insane. Jesus, I'll post that on the Patreon. Yeah. It was crazy. I wore a red zoot suit to prom. Giant coat. Oh, oh yeah, like I, the kingpin. I got you with the. Uh, <laughs> how long did the open mic? last that took place in front of you because you look, you look like a brick wall i look like suge knight <laughs> it's crazy yeah it was crazy i had a cane we had a big laugh you had a cane but it had, i think it had a plastic bottom like you stole it from your grandpa yeah no i for sure got that from my grandpa <laughs> that's my grandpa's cane he never he never walked again yeah it broke when yeah. you were using it and so he was bedridden after that yeah and all he could do was lay in bed and watch little nicky <laughs> Sammy, hit rewind. Nikki's over. <laughs> oh, it was like a reversal because all of a sudden he needed to tell you when something was finished so that you could take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike when I was a boy. Life is crazy. Say, I'm finished. And he would come wipe me. He'd wipe you. He'd he, Essentially, he was rewinding your bottom. <laughs> yeah. Getting it back to the beginning. A nice clean butt so that you could go about your day. Say, Thank you, Grandpa. Hit him with that little Nicky voice. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, when that came out, you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to go. <laughs>